But the headlines now from Capitol Hill. Last night, the House voted 222 to 208 to hold former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in criminal contempt of Congress. His crime, agreeing to answer any questions posed by Speaker Pelosi's handpicked select committee on January 6th, as long as the questions didn't violate executive privilege. But that has not been enough, as noted yesterday by Representative Jim Jordan ahead of the vote. What did Mark Meadows do? He gave the committee thousands of emails. He gave the committee thousands of text messages. And he agreed to come in front of the committee and answer any question as long as it didn't violate executive privilege. But Democrats says, no, nope, not good enough, Mr. Meadows. You've got to come in and answer any and every question we ask you, or we're going to try to put you in prison. It's disgusting. It is so disgusting. Here with me now to talk about this and more is Representative Dan Bishop, who's a member of the House Judiciary Committee and Homeland Security Committee. He represents the 9th Congressional District in North Carolina, which is not far from the 11th Congressional District of North Carolina, which Mark Meadows previously represented before he was appointed to White House Chief of Staff in 2020. Congressman Bishop, welcome back to the program. Good evening, Joseph. Great to be with you. Thanks for having us. We're hoping you can help us understand what is happening in Washington, D.C. today. Now, executive privilege is a big part of this story. Mark Meadows is saying he can't give House Democrats the information they want because it's protected by executive privilege. Uh, tell our viewers and listeners what the issue is there. Joseph, I think Jim Jordan did an extraordinary job of explaining that on the floor for the benefit of the people, for the in order to preserve the strength and independence of the executive branch of government, all of which is reposed in the president of the United States. Since George Washington, it's been uh, the law and uh, th that the president has the right to confidentiality about his advice that he receives from his closest advisors. And what Mark Meadows has proposed to do throughout the process since he's been issued a subpoena is to provide what he can consistent with President Joe Biden's uh, waiver of any rights he has in the privilege that, you know, following this new administration, but to preserve that very heart of presidential privilege, which is about the chief of staff and others very close to the president providing him personal interactions, personal counsel. This seems to be a unique conflict. Is there, pres is there precedent, excuse me, for the use of executive privilege in, in executive office conversations, or at least former executive office conversations uh, with Congress? Sure. There have been other times when these issues have arisen, and what has generally resulted is a, a, an accommodation process in which Congress, representatives of the Congress, and the representatives of the president negotiate out so that the Cong Congressional Committee can get any information it legitimately needs while the president's closest discussions with advisors are still protected. The, here's what's, what's new now. So that happened with Eric Holder. It happened when uh, Lois Lerner with the IRS scandal some years ago. Uh, many different, uh, Harriet Myers back in the Bush administration. What's different here is within a space of a month or two, the, the so-called January 6th Select Committee, which is really just composed of one, one side in Congress, has, uh, has gone directly to threatening to try to put Mr. Meadows in prison with a criminal contempt of Congress charge and to refuse any kind of real negotiating or, or compromising process in order to get the information without it. They, they really, they're, they're going on it, they're starting a new, they're making, you know, starting new precedents about how vicious they are. It's just really mean. I mean, Jim Jordan had it exactly right on the floor. It's just, it's uh, unbelievably mean. And I think short-sighted because it will not be long. I'm confident if, uh, before Republicans are the majority in, con in the House and we have uh, investigations we want to undertake and we're going to proceed in whatever way Democrats proceed, if, as far as I'm concerned. If, if they are going to drop all notions of what we call comity, uh, C-O-M-I-T-Y, uh, the relationship between the, ex the executive and legislative branches of government uh, that are civil and, uh, and uh, mannerly and go into the nastiest, most vicious approach they can take, that's likely to happen in the future, and it will work to their disadvantage, and they will not be satisfied with the result. 
are you saying you foresee a future in which uh, it's commonplace for former White House staffers to be thrown into prison for not answering questions? I mean, you, you have absolutely, you, you summarized it perfectly well, Joseph. That's the future that we do not want. And unfortunately, this has become a pattern in many different ways, wherein uh, the left, where the Democrats seek to politicize the criminal justice system in order to exact vengeance on their political opponents. Uh, the most recent that you can think of on the Judiciary Committee, where I serve with Ranking Member Jordan, uh, is the fact that the attorney general issued this memo and, and there was a subsequent mem uh, email from the criminal uh, ter uh, counterterrorism division of the FBI to put threat tags on parents who were showing up in school board meetings. And, uh, and, and so that's one where there have been many others, the, the use of the FBI FISA process during the Trump, the Trump campaign that people will remember. This mm -hmm. is, we're going down a road that's extraordinarily dangerous because Democrats are politicizing our justice system. Well, we know that congressional Democrats have been in the minority in Congress before, and certainly they know Republicans have been in the White House before. Are they in discussions about this particular situation? Are they denying that executive privilege applies or is relevant, or are they saying it just doesn't matter right now? They, they do say, I mean, Jamie Raskin, the, the gentleman from Maryland, argues that there's no legitimate issue of, of privilege, but of course there is. At one point in the correspondence between the lawyers in this, uh, the, the committee's lawyers uh, acknowledge that this very core of privilege that I've made reference to, core of executive privilege, the idea that when Mark Meadows is talking to the president, that's the that's the heart of privilege, the li likeliest part to be protected by the highest court in the land if the dispute ever gets there. You know, th that's that's the piece that Mark Meadows is still working to preserve. The arguments that, that can't possibly be any executive privilege there seem ridiculous to me, and I don't think they're... Uh, reasonable arguments. Uh, but again, if many times in legal disputes, both sides have different views of what is reasonable. The problem is that if you embark on this harsh treatment with it, that doesn't give any recognition to the reasonableness of the other side's arguments, you're going to end up in a process that upsets the American people, causes more division, causes more, uh, you know, a lot of people to be harmed who are trying to do their best to serve in government. Do you think the congressional Democrats see this as a political winner for them? Is that why they're drawing, drawing this hardline position? Oh, absolutely. This is all they have. Uh, the Democrats have had, I mean, if you think, think about the past year, it has been an, a year, uh, one year of one party rule in government. It has been catastrophic in every respect you can think of. I could go through the litany, but you know, if you just think for a second about the inflation rate, you know, the highest inflation in 40 years, record inflation, never before, before seen inflation, in producer prices. Uh, that's just one thing that comes to mind, Joseph, and I can tell you a bunch of others. I don't want to take too much of your time there, but they've had that, that's all they've got to talk about now. They want to make something out of the January 6th riot at the Capitol that is that has never been what it is. They want to try to take half the country, uh, conservatives or cent centrist to conservatives, and try to suggest that they're evil or that they, they should be shamed for being supporters of Donald Trump in his presidency because uh, some people uh, wreaked havoc at the Capitol on January 6th. That it's it's amazing. Their hypocrisy is unbelievable because we had, frankly, a year. Actually, Nancy Pelosi said it today that there's a there's an atmosphere of lawlessness in the country. Well, it started with riots uh, across the country in the in you know following Memorial Day of last year and the uh, George Floyd tragedy. Uh, and, and, and Democrats excused it. They, they said that those were peaceful protests. The fact is, all members of the United States Congress, all people, frankly, ought to be, uh, ought to be uh, condemning of any kind of political violence. And the violence that occurred on January 6th at the Capitol is very concerning, uh, but it's not a coup, it's not an insurrection, and it's certainly not something that, uh, that Republicans supported. And now they're, they're, you know, if you saw, saw a story today, they're beginning to selectively quote and and uh, lie about deceptively quote uh, text that went from members of Congress to uh, to Mark Meadows. If you're if you have the facts, I can tell you this, it's been it's spending a lot of time in the practice of law. If you have the facts, you never need to lie. And so uh, you're seeing lies emerge and they're being documented and they're being and the and those who are running this process are being embarrassed. 
Congressman Bishop, uh, we are, this issue is about, has been referred now to the Department of Justice, and they will consider criminal prosecution. Where do you see this going? I'm, I'm worried about it, frankly, worried for our friend Mark Meadows. Uh, he's a fine person, a, a good man, as Jim Jordan said. And, and uh, you know, the, Steve Bannon has already been cited for contempt, and that mm -hmm. was referred to the Justice Department, and the Justice Department promptly indicted him. Uh, I think there's reason to take a different path with Mark Meadows, and I'm hopeful that they will, that uh, wiser, cooler heads will prevail. Uh, but, you know, Mark Meadows is, a, is also a committed patriot, and he said he's not going to be intimidated into capitulating on this important question of how the people are protected through executive privilege. We've only got a couple minutes left, but I do want to touch on one other issue with you. Uh, Majority Leader Schumer in the Senate has recently indicated he might pivot away from the Build Back Better uh, bill and move to election reform, which, as we've talked about on this program many times, is essentially a federal takeover of state and local elections. What do you think is happening there? Um, I'd be a little surprised that they can make any more progress on uh, there, this this total Washington takeover all, of all election processes designed to perpetuate Democrat one party rule. I, I don't think they're going to be any more successful at that than they have been negotiating with Joe Manchin the remaining provision, the certain provisions of the Build Back, back uh, Broke uh, Law uh, bill that they're trying to pass. Uh, I, you know, it's, it, the folks you listen here, of course, are, are believers, and uh, we're all having. I've had an opportunity to marvel at how the Lord works in that it would not have been my expectation that Joe Manchin would protect the country. He's a Democrat, uh, and he's, uh, not, he's certainly not a conservative, uh, but he has uh, he's turned out to be, he and Kristen Sinema in the United States Senate have turned out to be key factors in protecting the country mm -hmm. from a, a radical uh, increase in the size of government that will be far more damaging, even than the inflation we've seen so far. Well, a lot of people have been praying, and it is common throughout history for God to answer prayers in ways that we do not expect. And so we should not be surprised if he has done that again, but we should keep praying. And Congressman Dan Bishop, really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Merry Christmas, Joseph. Thank you. Merry Christmas.